This is Porsche's all new hypercar. It's called the Mission X and it's a successor to the iconic 918 Spider and legendary Carrera GT. And Porsche is getting ready to try to break the Nürburgring lap record with it. This means it'll have to beat the AMG One's current lap record and that's basically a Formula One car with a roof and an extra seat. So it's pretty extreme then. In fact, this new Porsche has plenty of tricks up its sleeve. And in this video, I'll tell you all about them because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. The Mission X isn't the first Porsche hypercar since the 918 Spyder. Ever heard of the 919 Street concept? This was basically a road-going version of the 919 prototype that Porsche raced at Le Mans up until 2017. Porsche didn't tell anyone about the car until 2020, and by then, the project had already been scrapped. But Porsche couldn't get the idea of a new Le Mans-inspired hypercar out of its head, because it's back with a brand new flagship called the Mission X. This was revealed to tie in with Porsche's 75th anniversary, and what sort of 75-year-old wouldn't want a brand new 1,000 horsepower hypercar to play with for their birthday? Porsche has said that the Mission X is technically a concept car for now, like the 919 Street was. But unlike that car, Porsche said there's a chance the Mission X could actually go into production. I know what you're thinking. Car makers say this all the time, and their cars never actually get built. But when Porsche says it, it means it. After all, the Carrera GT started as a concept car at the 2000 Paris Motor Show. Porsche hadn't decided whether to put the car into production back then, but so many people wanted to buy one that Porsche ended up building more than 1,200 Carrera GTs. But that's not all. Porsche has already revealed some very specific performance targets for this new Mission X. And you don't go around promising stats like this without planning to back them up in future, especially if you're a massive global brand like Porsche. Some of these numbers are absolutely bonkers, and I'll tell you about them in a bit. But before we get into the car's performance, I want to talk about the way it looks. In short, it looks incredible. It's very different from the 919 Street that Porsche revealed a few years ago. It definitely isn't just a Le Mans car with some nice nice paint, some new wheels, and a set of indicators. It's a completely new car that Porsche designed from the ground up. One of the most head-turning things about it are the headlights. Instead of round lamps like on almost every other Porsche, you get four vertical bars on each side. They look a bit like someone's taken the headlights off a 963 racing car and flipped them round by 90 degrees. Speaking of which, the Mission X definitely takes some inspiration from that racing car silhouette when you look at it from the side. It's very low, very long, and very aerodynamic. Even the retro style wheels have aero covers at the back like old Porsche Group C cars. Speaking of which, the back of the Mission X has obviously been designed with aerodynamics in mind. You don't get a huge rear wing, but there's an absolutely giant diffuser that takes up almost the entire rear bodywork. This helps the Mission X produce even more downforce than a 911 GT3 RS. And that car, with its gigantic rear wing, produces 860 kilograms grams of downforce at 177 miles an hour. Somehow Porsche has managed to top this figure without giving the Mission X loads of wings and splitters like the GT3 RS. So it'll actually look quite subtle for a hypercar. Porsche said it did this on purpose to prove that hypercars don't have to look aggressive. So listen up Pagani and Koenigsegg, Porsche reckons you're all doing it wrong with your angry looking hypercars. Well, that's what Porsche said about the exterior at least, because the Mission X's interior is actually pretty leery, especially on this prototype. For some reason, Porsche decided to fit two tone seats trimmed in white and brown. It makes the driver's seat look like an ice cream cone. The white steering wheel is another strange touch. You might want to wear driving gloves in this car, otherwise that wheel is going to look pretty grubby after a few thousand miles. But ignore the dirt magnet colour scheme for a second, because this steering wheel makes the yoke in a Tesla Model S plaid look about as high-tech as a pair of handlebars. Although there is one area where Porsche has gone old school, the stopwatch on the dashboard. Porsche has been fitting analog stopwatches to its cars as part of the Sport Chrono Pack for years. But this Mission X also gets a full digital display packed with various lap time information. I suppose it will give your passenger something to do while you're hooning around the Nürburgring. And speaking of the Nürburgring, Porsche has a lofty goal in sight for the new Mission X. It wants its hypercar to break the lap record 
for road legal cars around this legendary racetrack. The current record for a road car was set by Mercedes with the AMG One. It completed a lap in 6 minutes, 35.183 seconds. That's more than 8 seconds quicker than the previous record, which was set by a Porsche 911 GT2 RS with some upgraded parts from Manti Racing. It's also about 22 seconds quicker than the lap time set by a Porsche 918 Spyder back in 2013. It's easy to see how the AMG One is so quick, because it's as close to a road legal racing car as you can get. It has the same 1.6 litre turbocharged V6 engine as a Mercedes 2015 Formula One car, but it also comes with four electric motors that boost the car's combined power to more than 1,060 horsepower, and it has all sorts of wild active aero to produce masses of downforce to let you corner at insane speeds. I've actually driven an AMG One around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit, and I couldn't believe just how quickly it corners. If you want to watch that video and find out how I broke that particular £2 million hypercar, then click on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description below. But unlike AMG, Porsche isn't going to make this new car a hybrid. It's trying something completely different. Porsche loves to experiment with its flagship supercars and hypercars. After all, the 959 was based on a 911 but it came with a twin-turbo, flat-six and a high-tech four-wheel drive system unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. It had so much power and so much grip that it would do 0-60 miles an hour in just 3.7 seconds. That is still very quick, even by today's standards. Then Porsche went a bit mad and created the legendary Carrera GT. This was completely different from the 959, it has a naturally aspirated 5.7 litre V10 that was originally designed for Formula 1 cars and Le Mans prototypes. It was also mid-engined and rear-wheel drive, but that wasn't enough for Porsche, because it changed everything yet again for its next hypercar, the 918 Spyder. This had a twin-turbo V8, but it also had two electric motors, and one of them drove the front wheels, making the 918 all-wheel drive. Now though, Porsche is ready to move the game on yet again with the new Mission S because this all-new hypercar is going to be a pure electric vehicle. But don't get too worried just yet. This new car could be one of the best hypercars of the 21st century. Porsche hasn't confirmed how much power it'll have, but it has said it'll have an incredible power-to-weight ratio of about 1,000 horsepower per tonne. To put that into perspective, a Porsche 918 Spyder with the Visat pack weighs 1,634 kilos, and it has just 887 horsepower. This means it has a power-to-weight ratio of 543 horsepower per tonne. That's about half what this new car will have. The AMG One weighs in at 1,695 kilos and has 1,063 horsepower, giving it a power-to-weight ratio of 627 horsepower per tonne. That's about 370 horsepower per tonne less than this new Mission X. Porsche's ambitious 1,000 horsepower per tonne figure puts its new flagship in the same league as cars designed to break world top speed records. For example, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus has a power-to-weight ratio of 802 horsepower per tonne, and the Koenigsegg Jesko just sneaks ahead on the Porsche with a figure of 1,151 horsepower per tonne. But neither of those two cars have been designed to break lap records. In fact, one of the only cars that might stand a chance of beating the Mission X around the Nürburgring is the Bugatti Belide. That car has the same 1,600 horsepower engine as a Chiron Supersport, but it only weighs 1,450 kilos. That gives it a power-to-weight ratio of 1,103 horsepower per tonne. And unlike the Bugatti Chiron and the Koenigsegg Jesko, the Belide has some hardcore aerodynamics, just like a proper racing car. But there's one very important area where Porsche still has the edge. The Bugatti Belide isn't going to be road legal. Porsche, however, has said that you absolutely would be able to drive the Mission X on the road. It should even be relatively easy to live with, because Porsche said it should come with a 900 volt charging capacity. That's twice the capacity of a new Taycan Turbo S, which means you should be able to charge it much quicker. And if Porsche decides to put the Mission X into production, you can bet it'll cost less than the £3.2 million Bugatti Belide. And you might even stand a chance of getting your hands on one too. Porsche made more than 1,200 Carrera GTs, and it built 918 examples of the 918 Spyder. Bugatti will only make 40 Belides, and they've already sold every single one. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, I've picked a couple out for you there. I think you'll like it. Just click on those windows to watch them. Or, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting the Carwell logo there. Simple.